Let's add a custom recipe type to our blog and see even more topics available in the 121 Minecraft modding courses. Now with energy and fluid handling for block entities next to many other awesome topics. All right, we found us back in Tell You Once More. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom recipe type to basically make our growth chamber block entity, our crafting block entity, no longer hard coded so that it can only craft one Alexandroid from one raw Alexandroid. No, no, no. We're going to be able to define whatever recipe we so choose in JSON file format. But for this, of course, there's a couple of things to do. Mainly in the tutorial mod package, we're going to start by making a new package called recipe. In there, we'll need three new Java classes. The first one is the mod recipes class. The second one is going to be the growth chamber recipe. There we go. And the final one is going to be the growth growth chamber recipe input class. Here we go. Now, what I highly recommend you do once again is you go down to the description to the GitHub repository because all of the code is available there. We will once again be copying over a couple of things specifically in the recipe method or in the recipe class rather because there's quite a few things to be added there. Of, however, of course, I will try to explain best I can. We will start, however, in the growth chamber recipe input. This is going to be a record and the record is going to have an item stack as its input right here and it will also implement the recipe input interface. This then needs us to implement the get item and the size method. The size is simply going to be one as this has one input and in the get item method, well, we can basically ignore the index because we only have one input so we can simply do this. In theory, I do agree that we could feasibly also use this single recipe input right here, which basically is, I mean, the same thing. However, I have found this not to work exactly the same way. So I just make a custom recipe input. It doesn't really matter that much. The input here, by the way, is going to be whatever we have inside of our inventory. So basically, when you see recipe input, that is, or in this case, growth chamber recipe input, this is whatever we have in our inventory. But we'll talk about that in just a second because we can actually close that class and go to the recipe itself, which will also be a record. This record is going to have an ingredient. I'm going to call this the input item. And it's going to have a second parameter, which is the item stack of output in this case. This will also implement an interface, but this time it's the recipe interface of type growth chamber recipe input here in this case. And then we're going to hover over this to implement quite a few methods, as you can see. And then there we go. Okay, so let's get started. What the frick is happening? Well, this recipe class is used so that we can define how the JSON file is read in. Idea being, obviously, we can let's just take a look at any old recipe JSON file, right? If we were to look at this one, for example, obviously, this whole mess over here has to somehow be in untangled, let's say, and created into a class. And this class is a recipe class, right? So the idea is that we're going to be able to read in an ingredient. This is not the exact format that we're going to have, but the idea is that we're going to be able to read in an ingredient and we're going to read in an item stack. And then reading those in, we will be able to save those and then compare them with the growth chamber recipe input. So whatever is inside of our, our custom block entity and of there's a match there, then we can start crafting, let's say. That's the idea. And to facilitate this, one thing that we're going to need is to overwrite the get ingredients method. That's just a thing that we also need to do. So this is just going to be a non-null list. And we simply put in the input item and then return that list. We're going to need that in a little bit, but for the time being, we're just going to have that and that's fine. So when I say, you know, when something matches, so the idea is that we're going to read in all of the different, um, all of the different recipes, right? And those are going to be the input item right here. So we're going to read in JSON file, right? G read in JSON file. This then turns into, right? Turns into a growth chamber recipe, right? So basically into a new growth chamber recipe. So it's going to create this particular thing. And here we're now asking basically whether or not the input matches the same input that we have inside of our inventory. And that happens in this matches method. So you can see that we have this the uh, recipe input available here. The first thing to do is if p level is client side we're going to return a false however if this is not the case then we want to check whether or not any of the read in items right so you can think of this as hey we're now going through each json file right each recipe that we've defined and we're going to go through all of those and we're going to say 
if the input item of that recipe, we're going to test it basically saying, is this the same as the P input? So the input are inside of the inventory and we're getting the item there. So the idea is that is the item inside of our inventory the same as the item that we've defined in this particular JSON file? And if it is, let's freaking go. Matches is true, meaning we found a particular a recipe that matches the inside of our entity or our bulk lock entity of the menu and therefore we can now craft. And what are we going to craft? We're going to assemble the following output dot copy that dot copy actually there you go. We get we are going to be able to craft in dimensions. The result item is simply output and then we have a serializer and a type. Now those two oh those two are once again going to be cussed or rather deliberate errors over here so that we can actually add them in a little bit. And then we need a static class. Now I will copy over now I will copy over the entire thing. However, I will explain as best as I can. Once again, the code is available to you down below. Now you can see this is the serializer class. It has two very important methods, the codec method and the stream codec method. Those two return both a map codec over here and a stream codec down here. These two are super important because a codec highest level overview defines how we read in a JSON file and it then creates from that JSON file a new instance as you can see of this gro growth chamber recipe and obviously for a growth chamber recipe if you think back we need an ingredient and an item stack and we read exactly those two in so inside of our JSON file we will in just a second we'll see this there's going to be an ingredient field and we say this ingredient when you read this basically this is the input item and then when you read this result, this is the output. And that's basically how you manage to map a field instead of the instead of the JSON file to a to a field, quote unquote, inside of the if, inside of our growth chamber recipe. Right. So we map those two together. And if we mapped all of the different fields over here, then all of a sudden we can create a new one of those and we have that saved. So this is how you read in a the recipe from the JSON file. Versus when we have the stream codec, that simply allows us to share it via client and server. But the same thing applies, right? We say, hey, this is the ingredient over here. This is the input ingredient. This is the, you know, this is the item stack, the output, right? And then we create a new one as well. So that one also works. It's just done a little bit differently via the, uh, via basically a network. So that is the high level overview for the serializer. And this one has to be registered properly. And to do this, we're going to go into the mod recipes class to actually register both of those. So both a recipe serializer as well as the recipe type. Those, this is going to happen with two deferred registers. I know, pretty crazy. So there's going to be a public static final deferred register of type recipe serializer of type question mark. This is going to be the serializers equal to deferred register dot create forge registries dot recipe serializers. Yes, indeed tutorial mod dot mod ID. I'm going to have a second serializer or rather not the second serializer, a second deferred register though, public static final deferred register of type recipe type of type question mark, which is going to be our types equal to once again, a deferred register dot create forge registries that this time recipe types and here tutorial mod dot mod ID. And per usual, I'm going to call or we're going to make a registry register method with an I event bus where we'll call both serializers.register passing in that event bus as well as the types that register with the event bus. Highly recommend it as per usual to double check the GitHub repository down below. That's always a great idea because all of the code is there and it will help you majorly in order to follow everything over here. When we have this, we of course want to call mod recipes.register um, inside of our tutorial mod constructor passing in the event bus over here. And then the class is almost done. We now just need to register the serializer as well as the type. The serializer is actually a little bit easier. It's simply going to be public static final registry object of type recipe serializer of type growth chamber recipe. So it's specifically a serializer for our custom recipe that we've created. Growth underscore chamber under chamber underscore serializer equal to serializers dot register. This is going to be called growth underscore chamber. And the second parameter is just going to be growth chamber recipe dot serializer colon colon new. No error should be present and we can proceed to register the type. The type is going to be public static final registry object of a type recipe type of type growth chamber recipe 
This is going to be the growth underscore chamber chamber underscore type equal to types dot register. This is going to be, once again, the name growth underscore chamber. They can match, actually, and they should match in this case. Then a supplier of a new recipe type of type growth chamber recipe. And you can see that this makes an anonymous class where we override the to string method. That's totally fine. And we, of course, need to end this with a semicolon. And in the to string method, we're simply going to return growth underscore chamber. And then we have registered both the serializer as well as the type. And both of those inside of the growth chamber recipe can now be properly returned. So in the get serializer, mod recipes dot growth chamber serializer dot get. And in the type mod recipes dot growth chamber type dot get. And there we go. That's it. And this now will be able to read in JSON files. And we're going to have access to all of those and basically we'll see if any of those match. However, well, we, I mean, we do have that, but not quite, do we? Because right now our block entity still is hard coded. And now you'll see why the, why the tick method, making it like this, right? Creating the methods around it and all of that is so useful because now changing it to be able to use the recipes is going to be super simple. First of all, has recipe has now changed, right? Because we no longer want to check if there's a particular input over here. We actually just want to check whether or not we have an, like a recipe at all. And that happens in the following way. We're going to have an optional of type recipe holder of type growth chamber recipe. This is going to be our recipe. And this is going to be equal to get current recipe. This is a method that doesn't exist yet because we're going to create it. And we're going to create it because we need this twice. We need to get the recipe twice. And that just makes it a little bit easier. And then the return here is not actually that crazy. We'll say this dot level dot get recipe manager. So we're going to get the recipe manager that exists, let's say, you know, inside of the inside of Minecraft that has all of the recipes. And then we're going to get the recipe for the following thing. We're going to get the recipe of the, the, a particular type mod recipes that growth chamber type dot get. So we will get, let's say right now we have all of the different recipes of the growth chamber type. And now we'll see if there's any match for a specific growth chamber recipe input. And the input here is going to be item handler that gets stack in slot input slot. And then after the second closing parenthesis, we also need to pass in the level and there we go. So the idea is that the recipe manager, we're going to give it a particular recipe input. In this case, we're passing into it our input slot and we're saying, hey, is there any recipe that matches with our input over here that is of type growth chamber recipe? And if there is, then all of a sudden, our recipe over here, our optional, is going to be filled. Now, if there isn't, that's totally fine. We can simply say if recipe that is empty, right? And we can say return a false because in this case, well, if it's empty, that means that the recipe, uh, then nothing has been found, right? Whatever we have in our input slot does not actually have a recipe associated with the growth chamber type. Therefore, we we'll return false. However, if we are not inside of this if statement, so anything uh, after this, that means that we have a recipe. And now we no longer need to take this output right here and we don't need to actually um, hard code it. We can simply say recipe that get that value that output because this is the output of our recipe that we've defined in the JSON file because we found a recipe that exists and there we go. And now the can insert item into output slot, the can insert amount into output slot, both of those work immediately because we've made it, you know, quote unquote generic enough, right? General enough so that we just change the output and everything still works. And the last step here is then obviously in the craft item method where we have this output right here defined as a new item stack. But here, once again, it is as simple as getting the optional, this is the optional of the recipe holder of type growth chamber recipe. This is going to be our recipe, once again, equal to get current recipe. If we are at the craft item method, we know that we have a recipe, so we don't need to check anything. And then the, our output is simply changed to recipe that get that value that output and that is it all of a sudden we have changed it and now our entire block entity works with a custom recipe type instead of everything hard-coded that's how easy it is and that's why i really like or, or rather this is why you know creating it like this is super freaking amazing because it's really adaptive right you are you saw that it like adapting this is super simple and absolutely absolutely amazing now Let's actually add the recipe methods over, or rather the recipe JSON files. It's going to be under data tutorial mod. I'm going to make a new folder called recipe and I'll copy over the two JSON files that we already have over here and then I'll explain. 
So this is going to be Alexandrite from uh, well, rather Alexandrite from raw Alexandrite. And here we have an end rod from stick because why the frick not, right? Now, obviously, you could add whatever you want. Let's just like add another one. Let's just do a diamond from Grove Chamber. And in theory, we can put in, I don't know, coal and we can get a diamond out if we wanted to. Like, it doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want in here and it should work. Granted, like the obviously the item has to exist, right? That, that's quite important here. And let's just say like we have these three different um, things. But let's just look one more time here to the Grove Chamber recipe just so that you sort of understood this. Look at this, right? We are looking for an ingredient field in our JSON file. Look at this. Ingredient. Oh, okay. Interesting. Now, we're also, what are we doing in the recipe? We're also looking for a result field. Look at this. Result. Would you look at that? It is almost as if this is exactly what is sort of predetermined for reading in the JSON file. And of course, that is exactly what it is. Hopefully sort of understandable. I understand codecs are incredibly complicated. Writing your own ones is obscene in a lot of ways. So if you do have multiple inputs that you need, right? Let's say your custom block entity is going to have like four different slots. Obviously, the changes here need to be, you need to change the recipe input to be able to accommodate four different inputs over here. Because this one is the is whatever you put into your custom block entity. And then you also have to read in JSON files that have multiple ingredients. For this, I highly recommend you take the recipe serializer, you click on this, control H, and here I highly recommend you look at, for example, the shape recipe serializer. Now, first of all, you can see the um, codec here is quite a bit more complicated, right? You can, for example, see that um, there's a category, there's a result, and there is also a shape pattern over here. So it is a bit more complicated, but in one of them, and maybe it actually is the shapeless over here. It is actually the shapeless. The shapeless has a, a ingredient list. Now, this is how you read in a list of ingredients instead of just one ingredient. Yeah, as you can see, a bit more complicated. Um, I highly recommend you just play around with this a little bit. Of course, in theory, you could also read in multiple ingredients. That is, That would also work. Like, that's not an issue. Uh, but in this case, that's going to be totally fine. And yeah, that is basically the idea on how to expand this if you wanted to. Highly recommend it. You also can check out the um, uh, GitHub repositories of other mods. That is also quite useful indeed. But now that we've done all of this and we have created the recipe JSON files down here and we have modified it and we have registered everything, we should now be good to go. So I would say let's remember the game and see if it works. All right, fans, we're back in Minecraft and let's just take a look, right? Of course, we have to find the recipes over here, raw Alexandrite to Alexandrite, stick to end rod and coal to diamond. Let's just for the sake of argument, put in redstone dust. Of course, nothing is going to happen because we haven't defined that recipe. However, of course, raw Alexandrite is going to work and it is going to create to us 12 Alexandrites because that is exactly what is defined inside of the JSON file. Same thing as stick, put a stick in there. Absolutely, we're going to get an Android out of it because that is what we've defined. And the same thing happens with coal. Coal is going to turn into a freaking diamond because that is exactly what we've defined in the JSON files. Absolutely spectacular. I can see it's going to continue to craft because that is what we've made over here, a custom recipe type added to our crafting block entity. Absolutely fantastic. Right, and here, of course, again, all of the code is available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository. But that's going to be it for this tutorial here. Next time in this video, we'll add JEI compatibility to our mod. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.